Hello and welcome to the course Advanced Computer Networks. This is the fifth lecture of module 5 and in this lecture we are going to discuss about the part 2 of security association. This is a part of IP security so let's begin. In the previous class we have talked about security association the part 1 of security association and where we talked about your security association database and the basic idea of security association. In this talk, we are going to discuss some other databases which are related to your SA. So let's start. So the second database which is needed for security association is known as security policy database. So what is a security policy that we are going to discuss, but let us read, read about the security policy database. So what I have written is another important aspect of IPsec is the security policies which defines the type of security applied to a packet when it is to be sent or when it has been arrived. So generally if you know whenever a IP security is applied to uh, any host or any sender or any receiver then we need to establish a virtual circuit kind of uh, connection or it can be a connection oriented service. So we are trying to make a connection oriented service so that security can be applied. We can easily understand whenever any data came from the outer network and it is a if it is a data from an intruder then that data can be discarded and similarly whenever we want to send the data to the other network and that that data is a authenticated data then the the firewall which is present in the other side can authenticate it and allow the packet to enter into that network so uh, there should be some policies we have to uh, define that which data should be discarded which data should be passed uh, which data should be allowed to the network so all these things will be maintained by your security policy okay so each host that is using the ipsec protocol needs to keep a security policy database so every host which is using the ipsec protocol for the communication or secure communication they need to uh, need to create a security policy database so here also there are two uh, security policy databases needed one is called inbound SPD and outbound SPD. Uh, similar, a similar kind of database uh, has already been created for security association database, which was discussed in the previous class. So, what are the different entry in the SPD? So, there are six different tuples found in a uh, security policy database. Those are called source address, destination address, name, protocol source port and destination port whenever somebody let's say this is a network and this network has several client uh, several machines connected to it or hosts and this may connected to a router who will be act as the edge network or the uh, firewall for this network and it sends the data to some other routers and this router may act as a fire firewall for this network and there are there may be several devices connected to it now uh, what happened we have to, whenever any data has been sent from this network to this network or if any data came from other outside network to this network then whether that packet will be allowed or not allowed or discarded everything will be decided by this router only so how it will decide whether to allow the packet or not to allow the packet that depend upon the SPD value means the SPD policy which was previously defined right so uh, to uh, the, the entry which is made by this uh, um, SPD will be this six field which is called the source address means from which node the data going from this network to any other network or from which network it came to this network that is your source address then destination address name is related uh, represent any dns entity protocol means we have two protocols we have discussed ah and esp so that will be used 
source port number and the destination port number. So according to this field, we can easily determine whether between the source address and the destination address or the source node and the destination node has been established a secure connection or not. Means is there any security association will be there or not. If there is a security association is there, then we can allow the packet to enter into our network. Okay. So this is how uh, the uh, means this, uh, this is how the security policy database used. Now let us see what is the use of in outbound SPD and uh, inbound SPD. So let us first discuss about outbound SPD. So here uh, the message is showing means let's say one node wants to send this is the sender he want to send a packet to uh, any other node which is present in the other network. Let's say both the sender and the receiver belongs to same organization and they employ a security association between them. One association is there and after the security association they are using the IP security protocol over there. Okay. That means both are authenticated user. So what happened in that case and uh, in other case too we will discuss one by one. So in outbound SPT what will happen? Sender will, uh, sender will create a outbound SPD or maintain a outbound SPD that will be used for the secure communication. When a packet is sent is to be sent out, the outbound SPD is consulted. That means here you can see I, uh, this sender want to send a packet. So that segment will be uh, transferred to the transport layer. Then transport layer will check the content means what are the things that he has to input. There are six different tuples that we have discussed previous in the previous slide has to be taken care means checked inside your outbound SPD. So who maintains this outbound SPD? The sender maintains this outbound SPD and the segment value, the segment contains all the six field that six field has to be matched in this particular SPD, outbound SPD. So the input to the outbound SPD is the six tuple index. So what are the six tuple that we have already discussed that is source address, destination address, name, protocol, source port and destination port. So this has to be matched over here. After matching that value then the corresponding policy has to be decided. So what are the different policies? There will be three policies. One is called drop, bypass or apply. So whenever drop policy will be inserted means drop policy will be selected if if every field match over here and the policy is dropped then the packet is dropped and cannot be sent to outside the network and if the things are matched over here in this second row and the policy is bypassed then it has to be bypassed from ipsec okay means it, the security is not applied to that particular packet and it will be sent from the source to the destination and if it is matched with the third row then the policy apply will be applied and the IP security whatever the different policies for IP security will be checked and the packet will be encapsulated then it is sent to the sender sent to the network. Now see what is the output. The output is one of the three cases drop that means packet cannot be sent bypass bypassing security header then apply applying the security according to the SAD. So we have already talked about security association database. So if no SAD is there, then a new SAD is created. Means a new row in the SAD uh, database will be created by the help of IKE, which is called Internet Key Exchange. So we are talking about Internet Key Exchange after some time. So let us first discuss about this architecture. So whenever a packet sent, the sent uh, the packet will be matched. If that packet, let's say. Uh, let's say that will be uh, the policy we have to check the policy so there are three type of policies can be applied one is drop apply and bypass bypass if it is matched with drop the packet gets dropped and it will be dro it does not transfer from sender to the receiver and if the packet does not need any uh, security that means it is uh, it, it is in the bypass mode then that value that that packet directly goes to the ip layer without the IP security layer means the packet does not require the um, does not require the uh, security 
then it will be bypassed to the IP layer and uh, it converted into datagram and datagram will be sent to the receiver. But if the policy is policy is your uh, third part that is apply, then it will directly go to your uh, security association database that is your SAT database and find out the entry over there. If one entry found, then we can easily find what type of key has to be applied, what type of algorithm has to be applied on that packet. Then that value is there any security association between the sender and receiver is exist if it is exist then that security association according to the rule of security association that security policy will be applied on that packet using your ipsec layer then that packet will be sent to the ip layer the ip layer will attach the header and teller to that packet and it converted into a datagram and this datagram will be sent sent from the sender to the receiver and if if uh, it requires the uh, means it is uh, it is in the apply mode but no security association has been established or it is not there in this uh, table then a ike that is internet key exchange uh, protocol will be called and what is the work of ike he will create a separate row for uh, that particular packet for in the outbound sad right this is how the outbound spd works now let us discuss about the inbound SPD. The inbound SPD means you, this is a, a host and this is another host and a data is arrived at this particular node. So when a packet are arrived at particular node, what will be the uh, scenario? Means what, what are the decisions taken by your entire IP security policies? So when a packet arrives, the inbound SPD is consulted. So as I have already told you, there are two different type of SPD has been created. One is called outbound SPD and inbound SPD. So here, whenever the packet arrives, it will be consulted with the inbound SPD. So let's say the packet, the datagram is arrived at your IP layer. Then the IP layer will send that packet and means it will check the SPD inbound SPD database. So what are the things he has to check? The six tuple that we have already talked about. So those six uh, tuple has to be checked and uh, find out the policies. What are the different policies? So we know that there are three policies. One will be your bypass, one will, will be your apply, then your discard. Now, if it is uh, if it is uh, not there, means the policy is uh, defined as discard, then it will, the packet will be discarded and not sent to the, means the receiver will not get that packet. That means that, that packet is not meant for that receiver or else the packet may be from a intruder and that should not be applied to or sent to the receiver. If it is not discarded, then it may be a normal packet and does not require any uh, means uh, deciphering. So generally the packet whenever it is secured, then only it requires, uh, means if it is secure means if, if it is encapsulated, then it needs to be decapsulated. But if the packet does not require decapsulation, it is a normal message coming from an authenticated user, then it should be bypassed to the transport layer directly. But if from the policy it is found that it's, it should be decapsulated, then that value will go to uh, the apply mode. So in the apply mode, what will happen? He will check the SAT database. That is your security association database. In the security association database, the receiver will able to know what type of key has to be applied, what type of protocol has been used, what type of algorithm has to, means decryption algorithm must be used to decrypt that packet. So after that uh, value will be find out from your SAD, then it will be goes to, if it is a SA, some security assets, that means some security association has been previously done, so that uh, it will be uh, converted into normal packet and send it to the IP security layer. So it, uh, then it will go to the transport layer. If no SA is found over here, then that packet is also discarded. This is how the inbound SPD works. Now in the previous talk, I have already uh, discussed about that IKE, that is your internet key exchange, why it is used. If the packet uh, has been found that the policies apply, but uh, to apply that security policies, no data has been found in your outbound SAD, that is your security association database, then IKE need to create a field for that in the SAD. So let us discuss about that IKE, that is only one uh, slide for that. The IKE is a protocol designed to create 
both inbound and outbound security associations. So generally IK is preparing the association between the sender and the receiver. And as discussed, when the peer needs to send an IP, IP packet, it consults with security policy database, that is your SPD, to see if there is an SA for that type of traffic. If there is an SA is available or not, he will check. If the SA will not there, if there is no SA, then IK is called to establish one. So a new SA has been created. Right? That is the work of your internet key exchange. IK is a complex protocol. And it is based on three other protocols that are OCLE, SKEME, and ISA KMP. So these are the three different protocols which upon which the IK is based. How these protocols are working? That is your reading assignment for you. So you can search from any book or you can go to that William Sterling book that was uh, from where the contents are uh, contents are ext uh, extracted. So you can go to that book and uh, try to explore more about these uh, particular protocols. That's all for the today's class. Thank you for listening.